One of the most requested cameras for me to review is the Sigma FP. So Sigma Nordic was kind enough to loan me a Sigma FP L and two lenses. I didn't have it long enough to make a full review, but I will at least give you five things I really like about it, as well as a couple of negatives. First, I want to talk about the build quality. As a user of Sigma's past cameras like the SD Quattro, I have come to expect a dense and hefty build with nice details like a proper lock for the battery door. And I'm not disappointed. Also worth noticing is built in Japan. Not only is it a sign of craftsmanship and quality, but also in current times and political climate, where our stuff is made is higher up on people's priority list when making a purchase decision. Also, I want to take the opportunity to point out just how small this is. If you were to adapt, let's say, a Voigtlander 35mm M mount to it, it's definitely a pocketable full frame. And for those that crave an EVF, Sigma has you covered with an external option, which is also tiltable. A negative is, in my opinion, that it's pretty fiddly to attach, which made me leave it at home for the entire time I had it. I suspect that if you buy this camera and really like using the EVF, you will attach it and just leave it there. Next thing I really like is that for what's commonly known as a camera brain, meaning just a bare minimum brick meant for rigging, it's surprisingly well designed and laid out. Totally blows away similar concepts like the Z-Cam or Blackmagic Micro. And that goes for stills as well. The subtle curve and thumb rest actually makes it comfortable enough to hold and use like a regular camera. And the buttons and controls are where you expect them. A hard switch between cinema and stills is very welcome. A negative is that I didn't find the operation as intuitive in cinema mode as in stills mode. Obviously, it's something I would learn eventually, but it was a bit of a bottleneck. Third reason I have thoroughly enjoyed this camera is the image quality. The full frame 61 megapixel sensor is one thing, that's obviously going to spit out awesome images, but also the lenses have been fantastic. In the past I have reviewed the 45mm which I found to be very good, the new 20mm is very sharp, fast, surprisingly small, all metal as usual with nice feeling focus and aperture rings. But my favorite has been the 65mm f2. Wow, what a lens! I could seriously buy an FB or a used Leica SL1 simply to have something for this lens. Next thing I want to touch on is another contributor to the image quality and ties into the smart button layout. The color profiles. They are many and they are super fun to use. If you are a JPEG shooter, you would be in heaven. But also for us raw shooters, they can all be applied within Lightroom. I accidentally shot JPEG the first couple of days. Luckily, the files are pretty pushable, since for example the orange teal profile can have a very trumpy effect on skin tones. They are also applicable to video. Now I haven't really tried it all that much for video other than a couple of clips, but if you want to go nuts on color grading, this little beast actually shoots raw video and can do so to an external SSD. While on the subject of image quality, I want to talk about the electronic shutter. Now it isn't a complete negative. There are positives to it, like not needing to worry about shutter count, being mega fast and dead silent. But there are drawbacks as well. One is potential jello on fast moving subjects, the other is flicker when shooting under certain lights. Here the LED panels weren't the issue, the fluorescent in the ceiling was. But with the shutter at 1 over 50th the problem disappeared. 
As a side note, just to show that it can vary from camera to camera and light to light, the electronic shuttered APS-C Pixie camera had no issues with either lights in this situation and I could use a much faster shutter speed. So it can, under some circumstances, lead to a situation that you need to handle. But it isn't enough of an issue to outweigh my fifth and final reason. This camera is a lot of fun and a lot of bang for the buck. Being fun to use, making me want to grab it when I'm heading out, to experiment, to enjoy photography is by far the most important spec a camera can have. That's it, not a perfect camera by any means, but a well-built, plenty featured and very fun camera that spits out gorgeous images. What do you guys think? Drop a comment below and feel free to follow me on Instagram. Until next time, goodbye!